welcome back to my channel for another video today I have a watercolor illustration to share with you guys so the inspiration for this piece came about when I was brainstorming ideas for my previous piece that you have seen in my last video the piece has been since titled gnome sweet gnome thanks to my instagram followers and just a side note it is available as a print on my online shop so i had this quick sketch down of this um, male character standing in front of a mushroom and the the little girl and her cat appearing from behind the mushroom and checking him out while well he's i guess waiting for her waiting to meet with her and that kind of reminded me of how I met my boyfriend. <laughs> and if you haven't guessed yet from the early stages of this painting, we met on Tinder. And I have no shame about saying that. I, I love it. I think Tinder is a great, great thing. And I needed a way to show that the male character was waiting for the girl character. I needed a, a way to somehow show that. And I was maybe going to have him hold up a photo of her, but that didn't seem to make too much sense. So that's when I actually decided to bring the whole Tinder aspect into the picture. I thought it would make more sense to have the characters holding their phones and there are little speech bubbles coming out from it indicating to us the audience what what they're thinking and since this picture is about romance or the possibility of romance i thought it'd be really fun to make the tree heart-shaped and pink and i also wanted to challenge myself because i don't think i've done a predominantly pink picture before Overall, I think this piece is fairly simple and I wanted to keep it that way. I really wanted to restrain myself from over-rendering in this piece and I think I managed to do that. And I also wanted to keep the picture looking very light and airy because I felt like the last watercolor piece I did, it, it looked quite heavy. I think I did a lot of washes and a lot of layers and i really wanted the natural markings of the watercolor to really come through in this piece i really really restrained myself from rendering too much of the girl and the cat because they're supposed to be in shadow and since they're in shadow the eye doesn't actually pick up much of the details and since your eye is supposed to go to the male character first i had to make sure that the contrast between the darks and the lights wasn't as strong as it was on the boy. To prevent myself from over-rendering this piece, I actually gave myself a fairly strict deadline. For a more finished illustration like this, it actually takes me quite a long time. I would say at least three days of painting, three full days of painting. And it almost embarrasses me to say that because I know people I know artists, really good artists, that do paintings like this in one sitting, in one night. And that's crazy, but I, I've never been able to be that fast. But I do have the tendency of over-rendering my work. So I, I told myself this time, I, I really gotta stop myself from doing that. I gotta give myself a time limit. Maybe I am just spending too much time on each little individual thing in the picture when it doesn't have to be that defined and rendered. So I told myself you have two days this time instead of three and you gotta prioritize what's important, where I want my audience's eyes to go first, and what can be left more soft and not quite as defined as, as the focus of the picture. So I started out the painting by rendering the boy first because I think he's the main focus of the picture. I did end up over rendering his face again and I should have been jumping around the picture working all of all the elements together at the same time, pushing and pulling certain elements back and forth. But no, I did what I usually do, which is to overdo things on the faces. And I ended up going a little too strong on the face. So I actually had to reel it back a little. I ended up having to lift some of the paint off the face 
But the good thing was, when I finally got to the girl and the cat, I was able to see that they really didn't need much to come to life. There was barely any rendering on the girl and the cat, and it still works. It does look like they are in shadow and they are obscured and not supposed to be the first thing you look at when you look at this picture. If I had given the girl and the cat as much attention as I did to the boy, then I think the picture would be a lot weaker because they would be competing for the audience's attention and it just wouldn't look like they are kind of around and to the side of the tree anymore. I have the tendency of trying to make every little element, every character in the picture look important by lighting it and creating uh, strong shadows around it. So this was actually a first for me. I was really nervous about putting a dark blue wash all over the character when my natural habit is to light the face and to put as much emphasis on the features as much as possible. So applying an all over dark wash across the figures, that was really intimidating. And it took me a while to build up to it. So in last week's video, I was saying how I was able to get out of the funk by revisiting old ideas and familiar themes from the past. And it didn't take long until I was coming up with new ideas from the initial idea that I set out to sketch with. I set out to sketch based on the theme of Mushroom House, which is a theme I've explored before. And it really didn't take long for other ideas to start to transpire from it. The very initial sketch that I did for this idea was one of the first few sketches that I did in that drawing session when I was trying to sketch ideas for the Mushroom House. And I want to emphasize how telling that is. When I was a sitting duck a few weeks ago, unsure of what to draw, I thought I didn't have any good ideas. All I needed to do was just sit down and forget about doing anything new, anything grand, anything different and unique. And just revisit some old ideas, flip through your sketchbook, and pick out something that you were remotely excited about before. And just start from there, you know, you don't need to outdo yourself every time. And you'll be surprised what kind of ideas transpire from that. So from that one sketching session that I had last week, I actually came up with three potential painting ideas. This is the second idea that I had from that session, and I have another one for next week that I'm really excited to do actually. But I want you guys to know that this still isn't easy for me. I have to really force myself to commit. And I could have spent forever on the design of this piece. When I set out to do a painting, I, I want to make sure that the design and composition are all, all good and sound and, and that all takes a really long time for me to settle on. And during that time, I, I go through all kinds of thoughts, you know, of self-doubt and fears and all that stuff. And it's really easy for me to change my mind and not think the idea is as cool anymore or as fun anymore. But this time I really made the conscious effort to not convince myself out of doing the idea. I, I really made myself commit because I know there's a high chance that I would try to convince myself out of it. But at the end of the day, I'm much happier for having gone through with a seemingly imperfect idea and then having something to show for it at the end of the day than not having gone through with anything and not having anything to show for it. And though it may be difficult at times to pull the trigger on an idea that isn't yet perfect. I'm happier for having done something at the end of the day rather than just mulling over it in my head and wondering what could have been. It's really hard for me to articulate my thoughts behind my pieces and the choices that I make uh, in my process 
but I can go on forever talking about it. Painting is problem solving. You come across a lot of points in a painting where you have to make some tough decisions that could lead you one way or the other. There are good decisions and there are bad decisions, but hopefully the bad decisions that you make in today's painting will inform the decisions that you will have to make in future paintings. I'm really happy with this painting because I made a conscious effort not to agonize over the details and not to agonize over the design of the drawing. I wasn't sure if I was perfectly happy with the drawing, but I allowed my natural instincts and problem solving skills to come through. And I find myself being happy with the results, even though I didn't mull over it forever like I usually do, and I didn't agonize over it like I usually do. And to me that feels like a big step forward, not just art-wise, but mentally as well. I feel somewhat liberated and ready to take on more scarier things. Anyway, I think I blabbered on about this for way too long now, so I'll try to wrap things up. Ever since I started doing these weekly YouTube videos, time has been going by really, really fast for me. And when I do a more finished illustration for a video topic and they're back to back, I have almost no time in between that to do anything else. So this past week, I feel like I haven't really had the time to sit down and think about things. And maybe that's, that's the reason behind my increased productivity this week. I just haven't had the time to sit down and overthink things. YouTube is literally a full-time job for me at the moment. And even though it doesn't generate any income at the moment because I'm still not monetized yet, I don't know, I feel really happy investing so much time into myself versus working on other people's projects. I have faith that if I keep at it for a while, I will eventually get to a point where I will be seeing an income generated out of this and how amazing would it be if I could just keep doing what I'm doing now and be able to support myself. Anyway, I digress. I'm really looking forward to working on my next painting. I know that it's gonna be in gouache because I, I miss gouache. I was using watercolors for a while now because I was desperately trying to get better at it, but I am feeling the itch to use gouache again. So the next one's gonna be in gouache and it's an idea that also um, came about from that sketching session that I did for the Mushroom House. So I'm excited to pick that up and explore it a bit more and hopefully I will have a painting at the end of it. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. As usual, I am having trouble coming up with a title for this piece. So if you have any suggestions, please leave that down below. And also, if you'd like to see this turned into a print, then let me know down below as well. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!